Okay, we're going to take a look at the new IE Geek 5 megapixel IP camera. Um, I've been using IE Geek cameras for a couple of years now and they are pretty good. The only downside I've found with them is that the motion detection is pretty, well, pretty poor really. I mean, it, it kind of works in the day, but at the night time you get all kinds of false triggers and alarms and everything like that. So in the past they have uh, been a little bit poor on the motion detection. So I've always sort of recommended not bothering with the motion detection on the uh, the IP cams. Um, they've made some improvements uh, supposedly with the, the 5 megapixel version where this has now got uh, humanoid detection and I'll show you a little bit about that um, when we get into the, the setup a little bit later on. Um, first thing you do when you get your camera, obviously un unbox it and make sure that all the, uh, the parts are in there. You get a power adapter, uh, an ethernet cable and some random fixings. You need the, the Allen key uh, out of that. Add a little kit there to adjust these um, these little screws there so you can position the camera where you want it. I've already fastened on the um, the aerial there, but it's just as simple as it just you know it just screws on like that. Um, you will need to fit an SD card, a micro SD card in this in this back plate there. I've already done that. It's just it's just two screws. Take that out um, and and put the card in there and fasten your your screws back up. Now I have put in the top left corner there, um, just a, an image of the the card I would recommend you go for with uh, with this camera, because now we're going with a five megapixel camera. The the file sizes are a little bit larger than they were previously, and all that information needs to be written to the SD card. So you would want the fastest card that you really could get to make sure that that information is going reliably onto the card. I would also recommend that you do go for an endurance card, which is a card that has been designed in a slightly different way, just with the view to be overwritten time and time again. Whereas your standard, uh, your standard SD cards, micro SD cards, you know they might be stuck in a, a phone or a camera and and only, you know, taking static images, and they may stay on that on that uh, card for some time before they get overwritten or formatted or what have you. But the endurance cards that I'm recommending for these um, are designed to be overwritten time and time again. They're more hard-wearing uh, card, more durable. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive, but if you think about it, it's a CCTV camera, um, and if it's gonna be capturing some important footage, you don't wanna to come to try and download that footage and find that the card's corrupted and the image is, you know, the, the, the footage is gone. Uh, so I will recommend you go for, for that type of card if, uh, if you can. Um, so just differences I've noticed with the the camera straight away is the lead that's on the, the back of the camera there is about half the length of uh, previous cameras. So this is like one of the first generation of the 1080p cameras. Um, and you can see there the lead. The lead on this is about a metre from that plate, from that back plate, and the new camera is about 55 centimetres from that plate. So if you are replacing an existing camera with this one, um, that might be important to you as to, you know, what are you doing with these? If these are going in a box or or what have you, that distance might be more important to you. But if you're fixing the new a new installation up then it shouldn't be too much of a of a problem um, there is a link in the description to a wall mounting installation video that i've uh, that i've done so so what i'll do now i'll install the the camera into the cam high pro app go through a, a few of the basic settings we'll connect it up and then we'll have a look on the the web um, browser access for, for this so it goes into a bit more detail of, of the settings and uh, i'll show you what's of what's available there Okay, in the Cam High app, if you go to the camera that you're wanting to look at, you'll be able to find in device information the IP address of that camera. Uh, once you've got that IP address, you can come to your web browser, um, type in that IP address, and then you will be presented with this sort of page. Now, you would then go into PC View, and then what you're looking at there is the is the footage that the camera is is recording. Um, you can go into obviously settings from there, 
and this is the the video settings that I'm using at the minute now camera bit rates is is, is quite a an involved topic um, but it, basically what, I, what I've been using on the the 1080p versions the two megapixel cameras is a bit rate of 4000 but because this one is a the five megapixel you need to up that that bit rate a little bit so i've done a bit of digging around uh, and i've been trying this it needs to be pretty much uh, the maximum bit rate that this this camera can uh, can handle so i've set that at 6000 uh, on there the video coding um that's the the compression ratio for the um compression type rather for the for the video that's being recorded uh, this is the new h265 um, settings this so this apparently uses half the amount of space on on your sd card as the the previous 264 version um, one thing you might find though is if you do need to download it to your uh, to your phone and then perhaps upload it to a computer or something it might it take a while to convert so it is what it is but for the for the time being, I'm leaving that set on on two six five video format. I'm leaving that on fifty hertz resolution. There's two options there. Um, I'm leaving that on the the top resolution, which is the five megapixel setting. That will give you an image um, ratio of forty three. So if you imagine like the, the square sort of image that your old TVs used to be, that's a four by three. Um, ratio modern TVs are a 16 by 9 so basically what you've got there is 4 by 3 and 16 by 9 but if you do set it on the 16 by 9 um, what you are going to get is you're going to lose the top and bottom of the of the image if you set it on the 4 by 3 um, which is the top one if you set it on that and then view the footage on your phone what you're going to get is either black bars at the side of the image or you're going to get the image stretched to fit the phone and we'll, uh, we'll have a look at that, uh, that effect in, in a little bit but uh, so the resolution keep that on the top video coding 265 video format 50 Hertz I'm leaving the frame rate um, I'm, I'm setting that on 24 that's basically how many how many frames per second you're going to get there 24 is, um, is, is, is pretty smooth that's basically what your any movies are going to be um, shown in the cinema at 24 frames a second um, and then the image quality I'm just leaving this um, apart from the bit rate this is this is standard uh, I'm just leaving, upping the bit rate to a, a thousand on that um, so that's the settings I've got there the only other things really to, to look at in here um, was the OSD set um, when you're you get your camera out of the box and you install it what you're going to get um, on the display in the top left corner there it's going to say IP camera and that relates to um, this here IP camera so you can change that name or you can turn it off I've turned it off um, you go into the image you can change brightness contrast and all that in there um, there's some audio settings there for volume but it's the same as what's in the uh, the cam high settings um, you can go into advanced and then email. You can put some uh, email settings in there. Um, if your camera detects any any motion or anything like that, it can then email you a, 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 a photo of, of what it's detected. Um, so put, put these settings in there. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, the alarm schedule. At the minute, this is saying that the the alarm if it was turned on would be active up you know 24 hours a day um, I'm going to change this uh, in a moment I'm just going to have this so it's active overnight I don't want um, alerting when the postman comes at, at lunchtime or anything like that so I'll, I'll tweak that later but there's not a real lot else in there that you want to be uh, sort of messing with like I said most of the things can be done in the cam high app um, the only thing you really want to be looking at is the video settings in, in, in there, the resolution if you want to change that you can't change that and the app that needs to be done in this uh, in this web access but all the rest of this can be changed in the app
So I'm just going to go through a few of the basic alarm settings now. Click on alarm management and notification. If you want to receive push alerts on your phone, you would need to turn on the receive alarm push button. Turn on humanoid alarm. Ensure motion detection alarm is turned on and then click on the blue adjust motion detection text. Drag the blue square to cover the area of the screen that you want motion detection to be active. On the alarm management and notification window, if you want the camera to make a, a, an audible siren when it detects motion so that if somebody say walks onto your driveway or your property and the camera detects motion, the camera will make a sound. Now you can determine that sound on the next screen by clicking this button here. Here you can select from an alarm, a canine bark or customize your own recording. If you want to receive an email when the camera detects motion, which will include a picture, uh, then you can set that up here. You'll need to enter your email settings, which is pretty straightforward and then click apply. If you only want to receive motion detection alerts during certain hours of the day, then you will need to click on advanced settings. On this page you can adjust the time that the camera is is active for motion detection okay so it's been a couple of weeks since i first put up the camera or shall i say the first camera um, after a couple of days i started noticing that the footage that was being recorded was very jerky um, i mean i've had the the camera set on 24 frames per second so that should be buttery smooth um, but it was very jerky um, I contacted the seller and they suggested a few things to try and up updated the firmware, exactly the same thing, no problem, just jerky footage and uh, the, the seller ended up sending me a replacement camera, um, if anything that was worse, um, so again it's just jerky footage, you'll be able to see um, and you, you, can, you can tell by looking at the downloaded footage, the recorded footage rather, um, which recorded segments are going to be jerky. Um, the for a ten minute a ten minute recorded section, I'd want to see the file size to be sort of minimum hundred megabytes, something like that. Um, what what I'm tending to see is anything around about thirty and forty megabytes which means that the the camera itself is 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 not recording enough information to in order to make that a smooth a smooth recording so to me this is is perhaps only taking you know a frame a second or something like that or maybe i don't know couple, up to up to 5 frames a second it's certainly not smooth anyway and you'll be able to see in the in the footage that's uh, that's playing now that you know it's like a stop motion um sort of recording it's just totally not suitable for um it's not fit for purpose um so you know you asked me the question should i buy this camera and i've just got to say no don't buy this camera this is not this is not fit for release yet um i'm assuming this is just you know this is a firmware issue and they need to update that um but at the minute this is is just not fit for purpose you can see in the uh, the recorded list there one of the things that it seems to do, um, it might be recording a reasonable file, you know, file size, um, at, at sometimes. But you know, you can see here when the the camera switches from night mode with the infrared um, LEDs on, it goes from night mode to day mode. Something happens and the file size just drops massively. Um, and you know, you might have smooth footage um, at one point, and then the next point, it's it's jerky and just unusable. Um, so, a bit disappointed really um, that a seller would actually, you know, send this this product to market in in such a state. You're not telling me they didn't know this. This is uh, this is basic stuff. You know, this is just test a product. If it works, send it out. They, they clearly haven't done. Um, so I'm very disappointed, and I would suggest at this moment in time to to avoid this. Um, I do hope the seller will, you know, make contact once they've got this sorted out. But at the minute. I'd say that this is one to avoid, so sorry about that, but uh, that's just my findings, and that's after using two cameras. Um, so, you know, the first one's on its way back to Amazon, the second one's going in the bin, so uh, that's where we're up to. So, thanks for watching.